uh, when I first got into music, um, it kind of started uh, just around my house. My mother used to uh, put on records and clean the house. And uh, that usually happened on a Saturday or Sunday when she wasn't working. And um, my older sister and I used to play and listen to records. And some of those records were like, uh, she had like Rod Stewart records, she had the Eagles, she had Willie Nelson, she had, I remember she used to listen to the, the Gambler record, uh, Kenny Rogers. And um, so I kind of started listening to all that stuff. And this was prior to being like 10 years old, I can remember that. And then my father kind of got me uh, my first record. He got, he bought me uh, the Eagles in the long run. I remember and I got that record and listened to it and I liked it but it wasn't until uh, cut to like uh, early teenage years when I started kind of getting my own record collection and at that time I grew up in Orange County California and all my records were independent records they were all punk rock records because I, I loved uh, the aggressive nature of the uh, records I loved the honesty of those records um, I had no idea that they didn't uh, that they weren't major label records, you know, I didn't know anything about it, only that they were like, you know, it just seemed very honest to me, it wasn't censored, and, and that, that's what really spoke to me, I mean, I was really into lyrics, and at that time I would, I would do a lot of creative writing, and, and, you know, I'd write, like, poems and stuff like that, but, um, it was the lyrics that really, um, I, I remember I'd get a record, for instance, uh, I got one of the big records for me at the time was this record uh, called Out of Step by a band called Minor Threat and I got that record and I remember I would get the records and I would sit in my room and I would put it on and listen to it from beginning to end and read the lyrics you know I was really into that and that record kind of spoke to me it was as if I had written the lyrics myself you know so um, that was really cool uh, I felt like um, I felt a part of and I needed that you know at the time there was a lot of stuff going on in my life and um that was like uh that was my salvation you know music's always been my salvation so uh cut to i was a typical southern california kid i was surfing and skateboarding and one of my surfer friends was a drummer and he said there was only one real band at my high school and he was like hey man we need a singer why don't you come down and and <laughs> and jump in and i was like okay and i I don't know why he asked me to sing because I wasn't singing, you know. Um, he knew I was really uh, into music and stuff, and so I went down there and I, I got my grandfather to buy me a, a microphone from the Federated Group, and I plugged in to a guitar amp and started screaming, and um, and we did some cover songs, and then I just uh, kind of without any thought I was just like let's write an original song right now and I was like I, I asked the guitar player like play me a riff and he just played me one of his original riffs and I just got down on the ground and started writing lyrics and melodies right then and that's kind of that was my attraction to music right there it was was the writing aspect of it you know and I really like worked on my voice and developed it later down the road because I wasn't in trained at all, I didn't know anything about singing, you know, so I, I worked on it after the fact, but it was really the lyrics and melodies that I really dug, and uh, that's kind of what got me going, and then and then I just was like, I wanted to absorb everything, so uh, mainly my collection of music was punk rock records and stuff, and independent records, but I would listen to all my mother's records, and then I would go in and sneak into my sister's room, I, had an old, I have an older sister, and she listened to all the Prince era bands at the time, so Apollonia 6, Sheila E, Prince, uh, Billy Idol, I got into all those records and there was a there was a record called Upstairs at Eric's by this band called Yaz and I really I dug Alison Moyer's voice like I was really into her voice, it was very soulful and I loved the approach of her having this soulful voice over like electronic music, it was pretty cool and I got a fake ID at a very young age, so I would go out with my sister and go dancing. So we would go to these clubs and dance to like uh, electronic music, but when I was going to school I was this punk rock dude, so I had all these different identities going, but it was all music, you know, foundation. First band was in high school, like I said, that band turned into a band, we called it Natural Black. <laughs> and uh, we were too young to play clubs, they wouldn't let us play clubs. 
So uh, we would uh, play house parties in Orange County. So what we would do is we would get one of our older siblings to buy us a keg. We would pitch in for a keg and we'd buy a keg of beer. And um, we'd charge three bucks at the door and we would set up in somebody's living room and throw down, you know. We would do cover songs and then we would do original songs. And, and we did that. I did that for, you know, a good year two years and then finally we started getting into some clubs down there but it fizzled out and uh i knew where i wanted to go i um everything was happening in los angeles so i was like as soon as i get out of high school i'm going up there and that's what i did when i first moved to la i was in a band called slam hound for uh five years and it was a great band and we made a record on an independent label called skydoor records and it lost all its backing and just kind of fizzled out before our record uh, came out. So that was unfortunate and then the band imploded and so here I was 25 years old and I'm like, oh my god, am I too old? I really thought that, you know, for maybe like a week and then I'm like, nah. And uh, I started looking for songwriting partners and that's when I, uh, I was just writing on a four track in my, my bedroom. I was just writing songs and I play guitar and then and then write vocals with just a drum machine and then I met up with um, Keith through my tattoo artist Kevin Quinn he was tattooing both of us and he's like oh I got this guy I want you to meet and he was tattooing his shop was right across from the guitar center on Sunset on the Sunset Strip and and at the time Keith was working over there and uh, he just came in one day when, when I was getting tattooed and and we started talking and we were we were both kind of jaded with uh, all the musicians in town you know and and people's level of commitment. So we were, we we're kind of feeling each other out, and and I just said, hey, let's just try to write some songs. And we and we just wrote songs to a drum machine. Um, Keith would lay down guitar and bass, and I would just he would leave, and I would lay down vocals and melodies, and and we started. We came up with a song called Clues, and it never got on a record, but it was like one of the songs that kind of we were like, let's let's get a band together, and then we just uh, we found some band members and started hustling and uh, at that time it was called Sparrow the band was called Sparrow all the way up into until we our first record deal and then we changed our name right before uh, we put out the first Buck Cherry record well Sparrow was uh, the finch of the songbird and that's why we 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 liked that name but it, it was a Christian rock label so we couldn't use it um, and that we thought that was just we were just devastated and I'm just so glad we didn't ever use that name but um yeah, the name game became really kind of a, a silly thing after a while. We couldn't figure out what to come up, you know, what to do. We'd all come in with lists, and nobody could agree on anything. And there was a transvestite that used to frequent our shows during the club days, named Buck Cherry. And um, cut to the first record. Keith's reading a book about Chuck Berry's life, and in there he had a quote that said, "Record labels will try to do all kinds of things, like turn your name upside down, like." like Buck Cherry from Chuck Berry and we we're like there it is again there's the name again we gotta go with this you know we wanted we just wanted something that was kind of just hooky and something you could remember and, and that's how uh, it happened 